Yo, K-Pay Sky here. What's going on, YouTube? It's a dark and gloomy day here in Kentucky. It's really dark and rainy, so I decided to talk about something that's a little bit more relaxed, but kind of controversial in the audio world, and that's Dolby Atmos versus DTS-X versus Oral 3D, and we're gonna talk about just about all of that. Um, so let's get right into it. What is Atmos? What is DTSX? What is Oral 3D? They've been around for a while, but we'll talk about it in short. They they all are object-oriented audio formats. And when you're watching a movie, if you have a bird tripping above head, you have a plane flying from the front of the room to the back of the room over your head, or even if you have a, a ball rolling around the room from left to right, kind of like the picture here on the on the screen, what that does for you is add um, immersion above you so that when something is flying above you or um, from the front of the room to the back of the room or across the room overhead, you're able to feel that realism. And all three formats are going to do that for you. But which one is going to be better? That's what we're going to try to break down in this video. And uh, let's see if we can pick, maybe get closer to picking a winner. Each format, all three formats, or the DTSX and Dolby Atmos, are able to upconvert. Meaning, if you have a receiver um, that is, has DTSX or or the or Atmos enabled inside of it, when you're watching a movie that doesn't have that decoding or a Netflix video or even a um, a Prime video from Amazon, whatever you're watching, your receiver is going to upconvert those. Um, basic surround sound formats to a more immersive sound. So um, if your TV or if your movies don't have or 3D or DTSX or Atmos, you're able to kind of get that experience without having that decoding actually embedded in that, that movie or that music or whatever you may be watching. Now it's always better to go out and get a Blu-ray or 4K that has that um, sound decoded in it because that's going to be the most true, the most realistic version of Dolby Atmos or DTSX that you can get. But when you're up converting, it's kind of trying to use an algorithm, maybe a little bit of processing in order to recreate what it thinks it should sound like. So you always want to get a Blu-ray or a 4K Blu-ray that's going to allow that format to come through or you're not really going to experience the way you should experience. Um, being um, Dolby Atmos, you're able to have different configurations. I have wall speakers, if you haven't seen my videos, I have um, prime elevations from SVS and I have them mounted on my wall, above head, pointed down towards my listening position. That's one way you can have your setup. You can also have them uh, mounted on a ceiling, which is what Dolby wants you to do if you can. They stress to do that the most. That's the most effective, is to have them in the ceiling, um, slightly in front and behind you, pointed down towards the listening position. They want you to get the best experience that way. Or you can get in in ceiling or excuse me, in speaker speakers, which are the modules that are either built into your fronts and your rears, or you can get modules that sit on top of your front and your rear speakers so that you can fire your Atmos up to the ceiling and then it bounce back, um, reflect back to your listening position and you can experience Atmos that way. Now that is the worst way to experience that and it's super technical. You have to follow so many different rules and boundaries in order to replicate Atmos that way. So it's probably the most, um, just that's the way you really want to avoid the most. The next best is the wall mounting speakers. You can mount them on the front and the rear wall or you can mount them on the side wall. And then of course the number one go-to is the insulin speakers. Just a few more similarities between the two. Dolby Atmos and DTSX and even Oral 3D are um, object based around sound format. So meaning when something above head flies from left to right, it's going to decode that. Um, it's gonna act, act as that object being its own object. So if you have a plane flying above your head in a movie um, when you're standing on the street, you're gonna have the sound from the street on your your base channels, meaning your five channels or seven channels, and then that plane flying above head is what the Atmos or the DTSX will try to replicate. So a bird chirping in the, in the trees above you, a butterfly or a bee flying around your ear, you're gonna hear that in your Atmos channels. Those are object-based surround sounds. So any objects that fly above head or make noises up head, thunder, explosions from a tall building, somebody falling from um, some sort of height down to floor level, um, those kind of things are what Dolby Atmos and DTSX are trying to replicate that your standard floor standing speakers cannot do, being them not being above head. So Dolby Atmos and DTSX, they try to um, replicate that both together as well as Oral 3D. Basically guys, what 
all Atmos is trying to do, what DTSX is trying to do, and what Oral 3D is trying to do is all the same. We're trying to give you a feeling of full-on 3D immersion. If it's raining on top of your head, we want you to feel like it's raining on top of your head. If a plane is flying over you, just barely missing the top of your head, we want you to feel that. That's what the formats are for. And so, if I had to choose whether to, whether if Atmos and DTSX and all of the other formats, are they worth it? I think yes. The whole point of watching a movie is to feel like you're a part of it. You want the biggest, best screen, you want the best sound, and you want to feel like you're an actor or you're actually going through that same thing that the actor is going through. That's the whole point of watching a movie. And so the best way to watch a movie is just to, you know, feel like you're there. So um, you can't go wrong with any of these formats whatsoever. Um, if you're running Dolby Atmos right now, you're getting some great sound. If you're running DTS X, you're getting some great sound. If you're running Oral 3D, you're getting some great sound. So if you're not into any of those formats and you think they're just kind of gimmicks or kind of kind of stupid or pointless, give it a try. Maybe not in your home, but go listen to one in somebody else's home. Maybe you have a friend nearby you can listen to, or maybe there's a an audio visual store that they can kind of give you a demo. It's really worth it. It sounds really good, but you're going to have to put in um, the proper work. If you're running Atmos speakers, you don't want to run the ones with um, the reflecting ones that go from the ceiling and bounce back to you. That's going to be the hardest to believe. If you're running ceiling speakers, that's going to be the best to believe. If you're running on wall speakers, um, they're pretty believable, but of course there's better than that. So um, that's just my opinion, guys. So leave me down a comment down below. What format do you think is doing the best? It's hard to say which one's the best. It's hard to crown a winner, but which one in your opinion do you think is best for consumers in their home? Which one's doing better in the DVD world? Is it Dolby Atmos? Is it just X? Are you seeing any 3D or Oral 3D movies that you can actually get access to? I haven't really ran into any Oral 3D Blu-rays or anything like that at all. And I don't have a receiver that can decode it either. So um, let me know what you guys are running. Which one's better for you? Which one's better overall? Do you think this, this conversation is ever going to get settled? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, hit that like button if you thought this video was a little bit more informative. Uh, if you thought it was fun, if you thought it was pretty cool. And then hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed. And we'll see you guys on the next video. Okay, peace, guy out.